baby will finally see, even to question truly is an answer. And our, our words are titled Bold and Courageous Together by Erica Hewitt. The word courage comes from the Latin core, which means heart. According to poet Mark Nepo, the original use of the word courage meant to stand by one's core. A striking concept that reinforces the belief found in almost all traditions that living from a center is what enables us to face whatever life has to offer. To encourage means to hearten, to impart strength and confidence. This is our work as a religious community, to encourage one another, to be bold in engaging the world around us, as well as what scares us internally, to give one another the confidence and the heart to live as fully as possible. Right. With full hearts, we you affirm, affirm our relationships, relationships with, with one, one another. another. We, we recognize our agency and our connective power. And we accept our responsibility to be bold and courageous. We light this chalice, a symbol of all that we are, all that we have done together, and all that we will be as our shared ministry encourages those within and beyond our walls. As mentioned, I'm, I am part of the Growing and Deepening Council um, tasked with uh, preparing Sunday services, um, and I was just had a, too much to do to, to be able to really do that, right? right now in a preparation for this service. And I was floored and like filled with, flooded with gratitude. I think this is the word that I wanted when I realized, when I saw Marnie and Angela and, you know, everyone, the, the village that it takes to, to create a service, like people had stepped in and created this wonderful uh, container for us to be here today together. And I'm just very appreciative of that. So as we begin another year here, uh, we, the Board of Trustees, and wanted to acknowledge that for many of us, um, this beloved space feels different, uh, more so even than in past years, uh, like returning to a childhood home where someone else lives or going back to your favorite school. It's the same place, but it feels different. Um, many things have changed, and yet there are some core things that remain the same. People come and go, some stay forever, and there's comfort and excitement in both of those things. People have expressed that coming here fills them with joy and also a little bit of ennui because of the faces that are not here for whatever reason, and there are many. Um, so we've come here to celebrate a new beginning, another beginning and acknowledge that yes, this is fellowship is changing, literally from the roof on down. Uh, and that's how it should be. But also we have to remind each other that we come here, we are here to celebrate joy, to and support one another, to challenge one another for our awesome UU music that is so, I just love it. I call us the UUlators because I just think we're amazing, or the UU Folk Choir, um, and all of the special music that comes. This is a, a, a shared community, in other words, and all communities need everyone to contribute and take. And if you do too much of either of those things, it starts to not feel good. But when you're working it, and I'm not very good at asking for help or taking it. It doesn't feel good, but you all have taught me how to do that with grace because you're so generous and kind in your giving. So in this continually challenging times, right? I mean, we were like, oh, 2020, it never get worse. Shh, don't ever say that again. <laughs> Man, 
Two years later, we're here. We have a whole new setup. We are able to share with people who can't come, but want to be here, so welcome. And I am, again, so grateful to be with you. So grateful. And so we thought we would mix things up a little bit today. We are now going to have a UU scavenger hunt. Um, we're gonna ask that you pair up at least or triple up with a friend or a family member or someone you'd like to know better but don't know yet. And um, we'll call you back in about 10 or 15 minutes and we'll make sure the kiddos in the back come. And um, we have, uh, we have, does somebody, would somebody be willing to pass out the scavenger hunt and the pencils? Thank you. Um, and I think they're all, they all exist in this sanctuary and they're all UU related. And we just thought the kiddos might, might like it and maybe the adults too. I frankly like saying, playing Simon Says so. And for those of you online, we're gonna have the cameras out so you can see, or you can talk about, I don't know how many folks are online, but you can talk about why you're here and what you're getting from this place. So there's two of you and, or you can go grab a cup of coffee and we'll be back real soon. We're gonna have a little music, yes? All right, scavenger hunt. And we believe in life and in the strength of love. And we have found a joy being together. And in our search for peace, maybe we'll finally see even to quest. Thank you. This was just something we thought we'd try because why not? And if there's anybody that wants, these are really great, I think. They're called My Principles and they're actually for the youth. We use them in when we did our religious education when I was a teacher for that. And it just breaks down all seven of the principles, but in you know simpler language, because we do love our words as Unitarians. Woo! So we're gonna do a quick show of hands on the scavenger hunt. Did Everybody find something with the Unitarian Universal written on it? Where do we have? Where do we find it? Anybody? Popcorn, shout it out. Hey, that was my go-to. Something with the congregation's name on it, written on it. The banner. We had the sign-in sheet. Symbol of Unitarian Universalism? Thanks, Dean. I, I never noticed that before. That's awesome. Yeah, it's kind of everywhere. Yes, our name tags, order of service. Yep, the tattoo on my back, just kidding. Um, and the symbol of our congregation? Yep, right, that's what we use. And on our name tags too, it, and on our program. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and there was a signature of somebody who knows what UUA does. Does everybody know what UUA means and stands for? I do now. Unitarian Universalist Association, which is our overarching uh, governing body, I guess is how I would call it. Um, signature of somebody who's led a service. Everybody get one of those? Okay, good, good. No one asked me, I'll, I won't be hurt. Eddie found a squirrel, not in the building, but outside. That was our live. That was the first thing he found. So, did you all find, what else did you guys find that was here that's alive that's not us, humans? Um, and art. We lack for art in this, yeah. That and that is Alma's art, by the way. So that is really cool. We and if you have art that you would like to put up on the wall, we do it. I think every month or so. So please talk to me or Angela or anybody else on the and anyone on the board. Uh, toys. We found bowling pins. That was Eddie's. He's like, those are cool. So. All right. Good. Well, thanks for playing along, folks. Appreciate it. I, and I think others, come here to explore what it means to be human and to grow and to be challenged, although we do get a lot of that out there, so sometimes I come here not to be challenged, but in different ways. Um, I, we come here for love, solace, renewal, when the world is mean and scary, which unfortunately it is a lot of that right now. It's also a place to share our joys, our accomplishments, and our love, and our welcoming. I always told Quinn, my son, when returning to school after the summer, and 
you know, he went to a small school and he really did definitely stick out. Um, that you have to go into the new year holding space that people have grown and changed in the time since you last saw them. And so that's what we have to do for each other. That's what we have to do for this space. And, and it's hard. We want to like, you know, I saw a kid I hadn't seen in six years. He has doubled in age and tripled in size. And that I had him locked in that time and space, which none of us are, although as you know, it, it does slow down, it seems, until a certain point. But we've learned new things. We've experienced new things. We've lost things. We've gained things. And be curious about that with one another. Invite that in and grow from that and help each other to find joy or comfort in those things. None of us are who we were. This place isn't, COVID has changed us all and is still changing us. I mean, it's not gone and I don't know that it ever will be. So lean into that and find the joy in discovering anew what this place is and who we are and why you come. And it's really easy when I live in Minokan and it's my bed is comfortable and the light is beautiful to say, ah. and then I come here and I'm so happy I did it. Uh, it's, it's worth that effort, that change of direction to come here. So welcome to this place again. May you find a sense of stability and grounding here in all that we know and believe together as we face what is new and unknown and I remember when our minister, who the last minister came, her first service was about liminal spaces, right? Between something and between another. And I've just decided that as I'm older, I'm even not middle-aged anymore. I don't want to live to be over 100. So um, life is liminal. And it's what you do between those spaces that is what really matters. And if you're regretting the past or fearing the future, there's just no joy in that. There's no, um, and it's not to say like don't plan or don't, but you got to be don't forget to look around and take a big deep breath and appreciate right now because it's gone forever there it went so there's a certain thrill in things that are a little scary and there's a definitely a sense of accomplishment when you face that and push through that scary and there's a bonding when you do it, scary things with other people so I have traveled that road with a lot of you and I appreciate it. And I look forward to doing so in the future. You know, often you use are accused of not believing anything. You're the, you're the church that accepts everything or the cult, depending on who you speak to. And that's really not true. We accept many people. We welcome many people and ideas and ways of thinking and ways of being and ways of loving and living. But our principles are our guidelines. They're aspirational. If you look at them, man, that's like democracy. That is big time, hard stuff. But they're great goals. And whatever drive or pushes you, you know, fear of hell or love of one another or whatever, whatever that is, you're welcome here. We don't accept all things because if you're here to not accept, we don't accept that. Which sounds weird, but the more accepting of everything, including negative or bad or fascist or whatever opinions, the actually the less accepting you become. That's true. That is. That, see, now that's a bumper sticker. I was trying to think of that all last night. <laughs> but if you're here and you think that and you want to learn, you want to figure it out, great. We're all in for that. So what I've just been talking about with these aspirational is the third principle, right? Acceptance of one another and encouragement to, it says spiritual growth, but I'm just gonna say growth in our congregation and then I'm gonna add in ourselves. Um, and so I just think these, you know, I love things that make sense and you do them even without meaning to, or you try to do them and you don't, you're not doing it so that you can win a prize or whatever you're doing it because it's the right thing to do. And so I'm going to finish with a little quote um, from The Velveteen Rabbit, which I hadn't read in years. And if you all haven't read in years, I suggest you read it. And if you haven't ever read it, you go ahead and read it. Yeah, it's uh, by, uh, never have known how to say her name, but Marguerite Williams Bianchon said. And these are two stuffed animals speaking to one another. And real is capitalized. So real 
isn't how you are made, said the skin horse. It's a thing that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you are real, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up, he asked, or bit by bit? Oh, it doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become, it takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter. Not at all, because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to people who don't understand. Thank you, Liz. And it's, it's interesting that I think both of us separately came to some of the similar con um, remarks, but of course they're a little different. But first I wanted to say, welcome back. It is really good to be together again, both here in person and online. It's great to be connected online with, with folks. Re as I read this, it's this, it, yeah, I'm gonna talk about a couple principles, but it's really about seeking some kind of balance, um, trying to find some of that in our lives and it will be different for each of us. One of the principles that has been on my mind a lot lately is principle number five, the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large. It's because we are living in some difficult and I think as well dangerous times. People are angry. As I talk with people in Bismarck, I find many really nice people, hardworking, loving their families and friends. But too many then, in the next breath, express anger at people who are different than them. They say many things that are not really true or are at ex least extremely convoluted. We have been encouraged in our time to retreat into separate brick, thick brick silos. And politicians and operatives are throwing insults at each other and pouring gasoline on the fire. We are not going to get anywhere very good that way. The democratic process requires listening and it requires a basis of common good. A hopeful sign is that many people are tired of that constant bickering. Um, and we must find it in ourselves to work together and figure out ways to make our communities better, healthier, and happier. We've done it before. In our congregation, we practice the democratic process. We function so much better when we listen to each other when we respect each other and we make sure everyone's voice is heard and on the big stuff, make the decisions together. I am very grateful for the board of trustees in how we listen, respect, disagree, come together and move forward. And I am grateful to all of you in this congregation and who are here visiting today who make this congregation what it is. A critical part of all of this, both in the turbulent world out there, that is also, we must remember, beautiful and marvelous, and also here in our congregation. As we think of what a critical part of this must include the principle number two, which is justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. As I'm sure you all know, this whole idea is under attack out there. 
we must continue to build understanding, reach out, stand up, have courage, act in our own way, what works for each of us to continue to do better and to continue to work at it. But everyone must be included. Well, these, as you know, are tall orders. <laughs> we start from understanding what is. It is what it is. But that doesn't stop there. But that is a good grounding so we can then, remembering to hang on to what's good and beautiful and wonderful, we can move forward. And I wanted to close with a reading about joy because we have to remember to be joyful as well. This is written by Donna Ashworth. Joy does not arrive with a fanfare on a red carpet strewn with the flowers of a perfect life. Joy sneaks in as you pour a cup of coffee, watching the sun hit your favorite tree just right. And you usher joy away because you are not ready for it. Your house is not as it must be for such a distinguished guest. But Joy cares nothing for your messy house or your bank balance or your waistline, you see. Joy is supposed to slither through the cracks of your imperfect life. That's how Joy works. You cannot invite her. You can only be ready when she appears and hug her with meaning. Because at this very mo moment, Joey chose you. And uh, now we are uh, gonna do our offering. And would Mary and uh, Don <laughs> please come and grab them? Well, we just have one so you can walk together or just do one, but John's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> um, please join in the spirit of giving and the peace that generosity brings by contemplating all of our blessings silently. We give in many different ways and we appreciate all gifts, monetary or otherwise. I would also like to thank those of you who contribute to the life of this congregation. Really, none of it is possible without all of us working together. The village is not just for Sunday services, it's all day, every day. Thank you for your generosities of many kind. May we be committed to using our gifts to make a difference in the world, to increase love amen, and justice, to decrease hatred and oppression, and to expand beloved community, to share and keep sharing as long as ever we can. When I was a kid each week, Sunday we would go to church, pay attention to the priest, he would read the holy word, consecrate the holy bread, everyone would kneel and bow, today the only difference is, everything is holy now. When I was in Sunday school, we would learn about the time. Moses split the sea in two. Jesus made the water wine. And I remember feeling sad. Miracles don't happen still. Now I can't keep track. Cause everything's a miracle. Everything, everything, everything's a miracle. Everything. Everything, everything is holy now. Wine from water is not so small, but an even better magic trick is that anything is here at all. So the challenging thing becomes not to look for miracles, Finding where there is one. The holy water was rare at best. I barely wet my fingertips. Now I have to hold my breath 
Cause I'm swimming in a sea of it. it used to be a world half fair Heaven's second rain hand me down But I walk it with a reverent air Cause everything is holy now Everything, everything, everything is holy now Read a questioning child's face they Say it's not a testament very hard to say See another new morning come and say it's not a sacrament to tell you that it can't be done This morning outside I stood saw a little red wing bird Shining like a burning bush, singing like a scripture verse, made me want to bow my head. I remember when church let out, how things have changed since then. Everything is holy now. Everything, everything, everything is holy now. Everything. Everything, everything is holy now. Closing reading is by Burton D. Carley, cheered by our community. Cheered by our community, blessed by our covenant, uplifted in mind and renewed in spirit, go forth with courage and in peace to meet the days to come. Amen. my way